Hey, uh, welcome back to Dukes on Twitch. Back today with Punishing Maverick. Uh, D sit was uh, did send me a list, but I cannot find it anywhere. So I've gone with my own list, and hopefully it does justice. Uh, this is Punishing Maverick, which is a deck that splashes red for Punishing Fire, uh, Clothus, uh, and then blast effects in the sideboard like Red Elemental Blast and Pyroblast. Uh, and then you can run sweepers if you want. In this case, I'm running Fiery Justice, which is pretty nice at sweeping up elves, uh, goblins, uh, young pyromancer, and tokens. Just a, a pretty interesting way to make sure that you can also have some reach against planeswalkers and players. I guess not players, but planeswalkers uh, and creatures in the same way, which is kind of cool. Uh, this otherwise is pretty much a green white base deck uh, with. A pretty small splash so if you are a green white player uh, and you want to build out your maverick collection uh punishing maverick is a pretty good way to do it the tough part is is probably the jewels uh, i'm running two tagers and a plateau you could most likely get away with a tager and a plateau and not play the fourth uh sorry the second tager just play a, an extra fetch land uh, i would say that three grove and three punishing fire is a really nice split um just make sure you can get it and in Punishing Maverick, you don't usually need the Cradle either. So you can definitely play without it. I believe Stitz version didn't play Cradle. Um, I'm just playing Cradle for a few reasons. Uh, it's quite good with Hex Drinker. Um, and it's also quite good with Tireless Tracker, uh, which are two cards that I really like. Uh, I think it is a little bit better in the Stoneforge builds as well, because you do have a little bit more to do with your mana in things like equip which can be any color so the extra green is pretty relevant um but other than that uh not much more to say i was thinking about playing a chrysali pride mage in the main deck over night of autumn mainly just to lower the curve slightly uh this deck is obviously playing clothis as well so um i've cut another reliquary which uh is pretty tough um knight obviously is quite well positioned right now but I think with Green Sun Zenith having access to seven copies, uh, I'm pretty happy to make that cut just to lower the curve a little bit, um, make room for another really good threat like Clothus, and uh, also make room for both Teague and Collector Oof, because we are down on a Thalia. Thalia not that great in this version, where, uh, hey Nathan, hey Tube, uh, because we are playing Punishing Fire, I did want to cut down on Thalia because obviously there's a, there's a small Nobo there. So I did want to have extra combo hate in sort of the fourth slot that fourth Thalia goes in. So I've added in T and I'm playing Oof as well. Just make sure that uh, for the combo and control matchups, we have a, a few tools to play around with, especially with Green Sun Zenith. Otherwise, uh, the deck is pretty solid. Court of Grace is an interesting one. I haven't played with this card yet, but I've heard really good things online. Uh, I know Connor False, AKA Loma Boy has been playing it and finding really good results. I know the Discord in Maverick is pretty strong on the cards, so I'm pretty keen to see how it goes. I think that uh, Punishing Maverick has a pretty good way to defend against threats outside of Truman and Nemesis when it comes to keeping the Monarch, especially because you have Punishing Fire as recursive removal, which is really cool. Um, this version obviously has a little bit more of an engine in the mid to late game with Punishing Fire, so... Uh, against a deck that maybe runs Planeswalkers, you obviously have a bit more reach there, which is nice. Uh, and, you know, once you start just making your land drops and maybe getting a Punishing Fire and a Grove online, it's quite hard for some of the other fair decks, especially with Mother Runes, to actually keep their creatures on the field. Because uh, hopefully we can just, you know, double f Punishing Fire or a Mother of Runes or uh, go after a Mom and then start going after, uh, over the other creatures. So we'll see how that goes. Hey, Juan, welcome. Uh, the other thing is just the Aetherstorm Canonist. I do like it in Maverick because it, it both disrupts and pressures, which is exactly what you want uh, in a deck like Maverick that is creature-based. Uh, you could be playing Deafening Silence because although it doesn't pressure, it is turn one interaction against some of the decks where you really want that turn one interaction. So uh, that's pretty interesting. Obviously, Deafening Silence is a little bit more uh, narrow. So a card like Aetherstorm Canonist is good against combo, uh, and sort of blue decks, but also good against decks like Elves, uh, or uh, you could bring it in against maybe something like Hogak, but Deafening Silence is a card that you probably wouldn't bring in against those decks. So uh, some some pluses and minuses on both cards. Um, but hopefully the Blasts, as some interaction on turn one, can do well against some of the Hull Bridge decks we're seeing in the format right now. So uh, hopefully the Cannons are sweet. Let's get into a League. 
and see how this goes. Apologies to Stit, uh, part of the leaving a legacy, <laughs> part of the legacy pit crew uh, that I was pretty keen to play his list, but I just couldn't find it. In game, uh, this is pretty much set up. Nice. Whew. I do love a fair fight. I, uh, I do like the current legacy metagame that is pretty fair. A lot of creature decks around, which is nice. Um, a few unfair decks, but it's always good to test the waters as well and make sure that you are playing a fair deck that does have it in there. Is Force of Vigor in the list for something specific? Uh, it's, it's very good against the Urza decks, and I also really like it against lands. Uh, lands is definitely a matchup where I have really wanted to make sure, <laughs> of course, uh, we have some sort of interaction um, in both uh, Valk Exploration, Mox Diamond, Sylvan Library. So trying to keep them off those sort of cards is pretty strong. Lands is definitely a matchup that has switched over from being just a... Um, a matchup where you can target their graveyard and... Uh, you know, stopping life from the loam is one engine, which it used to rely on, but now having Valakid Exploration as well, you definitely need answers to shut that down pretty early on. Um, it's also really nice in a lot of the fair matchups, things like Death and Taxes. Uh, it's great against Urza uh, and other Stompy decks, these Mystic Forge decks that are coming about as well. You really want to have that answer. Uh, and also Blood Moon decks. This deck does run Noble Hierarchs and Basics, but a lot of the time Blood Moon's coming down before you find those cards, so... Uh, having it against the the blue, the red moon stompy decks is also quite nice. Um, this is an interesting hand. I think it's a little bit too mana intensive. We're up against Jack, so I'm going to assume it's either blue white Omni or uh, Doomsday, and I think this hand is just too uh, mana heavy. It doesn't really do anything. Um, you know, the Nut of Autumn is probably something I want to keep in the deck as a Green Suns target. Um, so I am going to mulligan this. I do want to mulligan to a card that is probably good against any deck that the Jack plays, which is probably a Thalia hand. Okay. This isn't a Thalia hand, but it's a hand with a pretty nice curve, and it's also got Sylvan Library as a, a two, two drop. If this is Doomsday, it's going to be really tough. Um, I think I'd rather... Just try to keep a hand that might be good against Omni, because against Omni we do have a bit more of game, especially with Knight of Autumn. So I'm going to keep this in bottom the Punishing Fire. It could be a case of bottoming the Clothis. Just in case they are in some sort of Delver deck, perhaps I want the removal. So I think for that case I'd rather have Protection, Card Advantage, Removal. And then a good threat in uh, Knight of Autumn. So I'm going to bottom close this. Personal tutor. Okay. Doomsday. All right. Green Suns. So there's not too much I can do here. I can Green Suns for Drydabba. I can play the Mum. Unfortunately, we can't Wasteland. We can't stop a uh, Duck Ritual into Doomsday. What do I really want? The tough thing is that Doomsday doesn't have great combo hate lineup. So cards like Gadoktik and Collector Oof don't really do a whole lot. Collector Oof can be okay uh, at just buying some time against their LED or Lotus Petal starts, but otherwise it's it's a, it's a tough one. I think I'm just going to play the Mum. There might be a case where Mum into Thalia off the top is okay. So let's go Savannah into Mother Friends. Although the Green Suns is nice for Dry Dabba, I'm not too sure what the 3 drop is that I want to draw into, or the 2 drop to play around days is. Yeah. 
is Doomsday. Jack still with two cards in hand. Doomsday really tough. Um, I have seen some players play cards like Hushbringer, which do stop uh, Thassa's Oracle, which is nice. Uh, Avon Mind Sensor or Opposition Agent can be pretty nice in response to a Doomsday. The only issue is that sometimes you just don't have the time to set that up, um, especially against a Doomsday player that, that has played the deck. They usually know that you can go for it pretty quickly against Maverick because we just can't put the put a clock onto the field. Um, that's gonna that's gonna beat them. But nothing too different here. A pretty, yeah, normal looking setup. Swords. Hmm. Not a whole lot we can do here. Pretty happy to attack. And then I guess hold up Punishing Fire or Swords in case there's some sort of incorrect way that my opponent plays this and doesn't leave enough cards or leaves cards uh, in the library. And so there's a, a situation where perhaps against Doomsday you can steal a win by them playing Thassa's Oracle and then you remove the Punishing Fire in response. Um, interesting. So they must... So they have one card left. They have force blue card. Oh, they can cycle. Okay. Yeah, that'll do it. Um, this is going to be an interesting one. It's it's really a case of anything that has a remote uh, ability to have an effect on the game. I don't mind these. Uh, these are probably all pretty pretty slow. Pretty happy to take out the punishing fires. Or at least the sorts of plushes first. That's a pretty easy cut. Uh, Ramanap most likely. There is a situation where we can take them off uh, Underground Seas, which could be pretty good. But Clothis, a little bit too late. Ramanap, a little bit too late. Um, I don't mind Ooze, because it can just be an early threat, which is nice. Yeah, Clothis can definitely go out. Knight of Autumn's interesting. So because my opponent's on LEDs and Lotus Petals, sometimes my opponent will play out those spells uh, before a Thalia hits play, so they don't have to play them with the uh, the extra attacks of Thalia. So there are situations where I do have a target for Knight of Autumn, which is nice. And any small chance like that that I get, I'm pretty happy to take. So There's also the thought that Collector Oof is just better than Knight of Autumn, and Knight of Autumn isn't really there to do anything. Yeah, I think um, I think Hushbringer isn't worth it for uh, Doomsday specifically, but I think that if the metagame has a lot of ETB creatures, so things like Death and Taxes, uh, Esper Vile, uh, Elves and Goblins, then it's nice to also have Hex uh, Hushbringer to bring in against a deck like Doomsday. But yeah, sadly, Hushbringer. Even if I did have Hushbringer, it would be a, a pretty tough matchup either way. But but that's about it. Um, yeah, Teague's always an interesting one because it does, of course, stop our own Green Suns, which which might be enough to take it out. I think that gr Green Suns being shut off by an onboard Teague is worse for me than an onboard Teague shutting off Force. So I think it might just be good. Teague that goes out. Hmm. 
<laughs> um, this is a turn one mum, turn two cannonist. But then it doesn't really do a whole lot else. We need to draw into a red source for the blast effects. But maybe that's enough. It doesn't do a whole lot against something like a Dark Ritual into Doomsday. But Canonus does buy some time. It's just tough because Canonus can, doesn't stop something like uh, Plains Mum go, land go, uh, turn to Canonus, they go land Lotus Petal, Doomsday, and then they can use Cyclers to get there. But maybe it's okay. We'll keep it. Yeah, it's a, it's a tough one. I don't believe my opponent would have any interaction for the mum or really care about the mum. But if we lose the mum, we lose the cradle, which is even a, another reason to maybe not keep this hand if you did think your opponent was on something like Fatal Push or something like that. Hey, Dark Cloud, we are. And they have Fatal Push, okay. Well, now we need a land. That's not gonna do it. And to be fair, like, if they're not Fatal Pushing the Mum, then they're not gonna be able to Fatal Push something else. See what the preordain did. One top, one bottom. Hmm. Definitely punished for for keeping the hand, but would have been interesting as they do have a pretty slow start if the canonist resolved. Only way here is if my opponent doesn't play, either has counter magic or doesn't play Thassa's Oracle through a cavern and we draw a red source or a fetch. But definitely a tough one. I played against uh, Murfolk last night in paper that was playing the, is it Paradigm Shift or Paragym Shift with Azza's Oracle, which is pretty cool. Cool to see Murfolk back with a combo finish, but still does have the, the beatdown strategy. I was playing uh, Blue Red Delver and got blown out by Chalice. Chalice was very good against me, I will say. Yeah, I'm, uh, I have played combo before, not the biggest fan, but it is cool. Paradigm shift, is that how you say it? I, I can never, I can never say it correctly, I don't say, I don't think. Paradigm shift. Paradigm. Yeah. Rough. Not too much we can do there. Got it the first time? Okay, cool. <laughs> nice. Uh, no, this is a no lander. Uh, this is actually pretty good. I like keeping this. Uh, probably going... Uh, 
Canopy Mum into Plateau Silver Library. Silver Library really nice because you can get the hand back, which is cool. Keep this bottom to collect Oof. I'm sure Doomsday is harder to play against the blue decks, but it seems like a, a pretty great choice against the uh, the fair decks. The reason I played the Plateau is that if we draw another land that isn't a red source, I can hopefully play this out as a green-white deck and not actually have to show the red. That'd be very cool. Uh, it was uh, Pyroblasts and... Pyroblasts and... Canonist. Just turn to Canonist and then just Pyroblasts. Knight's pretty nice here because we now have access to uh, turning Plateau into Caracas. Unfortunately, we can't draw Caracas. We can't get like Wasteland and Caracas into play this turn. The other option is to Swords, Grizzlebrand, and then uh, Wasteland, the Ancient Tomb, which is pretty interesting. Okay. Swords isn't doing a whole lot here. Opponent's at 11. I don't mind Swords, see what happens. See if they counter it or not. Because they might think we don't have a Plains or... A, uh, a Plains or Forest here. To go find Crackers with the Knight. They're going to draw four. Okay. Makes sense. It's kind of free. Interesting. I will hit the tomb, and then I'm pretty happy to attack for four, putting them back to seven. I don't think game one have to worry about removal, unless they have like Omniscient in the Cunning Wish anyway, so it should be fine. do you have? That's the big question. Brainstorm. Okay. Now I kind of wish that I kept the oof, but that is hindsight. <laughs> hey, Ando. Welcome. Uh, I sadly have... Uh, my father's 70th, which would be a pretty good party, so I won't be in the Mana Traders event, but I bid you good luck if you're in it, and to anyone else in chat, or listening on YouTube. The Mana Traders events look really cool, I do have to take part in, in them sometime. Oh, another Wasteland's pretty huge. I think another Wasteland here... Ah, it's so close to lethal, because I could Wasteland myself, 5-6. Pretty happy to. Hmm. They're down to seven cards. Got rid of Sneak and Devil Grizz. Yeah. This attack means that they no longer have Ancient Tomb as a land they can tap for, which is nice. 
So they have to have like City of Traders or Second Lotus Petal Land. Folk. Okay. Brainstorm. That's fine. It's one less mana they can use to cast a show and tell. They've already played a land for turn. Yeah, nice. Very cool to get game one. Show and tell is going to be interesting. I like the cannonists. I like the blasts. I don't mind the force. Uh, I like taking out the, the punishing fires. Uh, the clothes is pretty small or pretty slow. Uh, probably some number of swords. I don't mind keeping in one. That's 59. It might just be one choke on the draw. Kind of like everything else. There is a thought to just dropping all swords, but... I usually like to keep one sword in, uh, depending on how they're playing their 75. Um, the one card that I think about is, it is a uh, three mana blue creature that allows you to, I think, like loot. And if you discard a legendary creature, you can get to create a copy of it, which is just another way to put in a Grizzlebrand or Emrakul. Arcane Artisan. There we go. Arcane Artisan is a big card that I respect for the sword. So this is pretty good. Let's see how this plays out. Yeah, Sword did work out game one, which is really nice. It It's definitely a line that I don't really... I probably wouldn't consider in a competitive in-person game, but yeah, it was nice to, to work out. I think the big draw there was drawing the Wasteland. Uh, this is a sweet hand. I'll keep this. Turn one, hold up blast. Turn two, Thalia. Uh, or even... Uh, turn one, Green Suns for Dried Arbor. Turn two, Thalia, hold up blast so it can't be countered. See what the term one play is. Preordain. Okay. If it's bottom, bottom, I'm pretty happy to go term one dried arbor. Two cards bottom. Okay. Well, that actually changes things because now I can keep the green suns for something else and just play Noble Hierarch. Which I, th I think is okay. I like to build up my board here where I feel a little bit safer. Preordain. One top, one bottom. Okay. Folk. Sure. Ponder. Okay. Ponder looks like it's not going to be a shuffle. Okay. They chose to shuffle. Okay. Pedal. Sure. Nice. Five cards left. Ooh, Scrib Ranger. Interesting. Two. Two. Yeah, so Scrib Range is free if we just want to cast the Thalia, but I do want to hold up the Blast. The question is, do I want to play the Grove or play the Windswept Heath? I'm going to play the Grove and then cast Thalia like this. So I can hold up blast here for any counter magic, but I can't hold blast once it gets once it goes into play because then the blast costs two. But if they are looking to force this, and the red elemental blast gets there, I'm pretty happy about that. And seeing that they force this, they obviously care about it, which is nice. So we'll try to counter back. Nice, nice. Okay. Four cards. Preordain of two mana. That is fine. Two to the bottom. All right. 
Well, now if we get to wasteland territory, we can take them off this Volk, which is pretty huge. Another blast. Okay. Um, Ranger is... I guess we can attack first. I'm not going to Green Suns in this turn for another Exalted creature, so I might as well attack first. Puts me down to 16. And now I can either play Knight, but not hold up Blast. I could also Green Suns for Collector Oof to turn off the Lotus Petal. Which is interesting, which beats um, like Ancient Tomb into Show and Tell into Red Source Creature. I think Knight has the highest upside, so I might just go with Knight. Ranger Hold Up Blast does mean that I get to cast the Knight next turn pretty, pretty easily. Two mana, three mana. Hmm. How does my opponent win? I think my opponent wins through Soul Land Show and Tell Creature. They currently have three cards in hand, and they just preordained Bottoming Two. Hold Up Ranger is nice. I think that's okay. Holding up Pyroblast is really nice because it beats Show and Tell. Oof is pretty nice as well. They play a second red source. Okay. If I get dry at Arbor, I swing for four turn, which makes it a four turn clock. Uh, so if I attack, if I get Dried Arbor, we get to untap, play Knight. Four, put him to 12. Untap, Knight is a 3-3. Three, three. We attack, we probably hold back the Knight for Sneak Attack to hold up Caracas. So it's just four again, four again. So I think I do want to go for Dried Arbor here. It does turn off Pyroblast in end step here because I don't have ex access to... I do actually have access to double mana here because of the Hierarch, so... That's actually okay. Canopy's nice. So let's try this first. Nice. Now I want to have red up, so I'm actually just going to use Noble here. Playtaker. Alright. Attack for four. Yeah, Teague might be correct next turn because they, they have mana. But Teague shutting off hardcast show and uh, sneak attack is pretty nice. Some sort of sweeper here would be good, but obviously my opponent just didn't draw well. But pretty, yeah, I was pretty happy with how we set up the board. Obviously got some nice uh, pressure going, and Thali was just pressure and disruption, which is really nice. But yeah, they could still steal a tomb sneak. Two, four, six. Two, four, six. Hmm. Thalia is bay. <laughs> Alright. We're on the scoreboard. 
Hey, Rex, thanks for the follow. Uh, let me know what you're from. Uh, if you play Legacy, what are you playing Legacy? Yeah, Teague there would have been nice as well. Um, I guess one of the reasons that I like Knight is that it's a 3-3, so it doesn't die to something like Pyroclasm or Kozilek's Return, which is kind of nice. So if they can't find their combo but can find some sort of sweeper, Knight lives, which is kind of nice. Yeah, Teague, uh, pretty solid. Once you're not scared of show and tell, that's why I love the red splash, because you do get access to blast effects. So having that is really sweet. Alright. Let's go. Up against Slod. Cool. Um, yeah, I don't mind this hand. It has one half of the Grove Punishing Fire combo. It has Acceleration. It has Protection. It has a really good beater. It has Mana. Pretty happy about this. It does get beaten by like Turn 1 Blood Moon. Flooded Strand. Okay. Trop. Noble. Okay. Interesting. Uh, this could be Infect. So there is a consideration to keep the Wasteland for Insectile Aberration. It could also just be like a Bug Noble deck. I think in any case, I'm happy to fetch and play bird. Just to really turn my mana on. And I'm actually happy to get a basic here. Trop Noble. Trop Noble's interesting. Trop Noble is something you don't really see these days. Prismatic Vista. Okay. So opponent probably not playing something like Mystic Sanctuary, which is nice. No black mana now either. Teferi Bounce would be good. Uro. Okay. I can I can play against Uro. Didn't crack is it back to the hand? That's pretty interesting. Okay, they have swords. Um Hmm. Yeah, ban Uro. Could be food chain, yeah. Could definitely be food chain. I I don't mind green suns for dried arbor. Play mum. Food chain is tough. We do have the blasts and the force of vigor, which are pretty strong. On this board, choke doesn't look too bad either. But at least the brainstorm, I guess if they have a fetch as well, they can cast the Uru as early as next turn. Oh, this turn, sorry. Food chain. Alright. Oh, they just played it out. Okay. We do have the knight here. They have three cards left. I guess if they have a uh, force bird, it's pretty tough, but I can't really play around that. I think it's just play wasteland. Play knight. Yeah, they have the bird and Mist Hollow. Yeah, that's rough. I, 
I could try to bait with Hexdrinker, but I think they would just use it to keep the uh, recruiter does it. Hmm. This is going to be a tough one. So, I do like Canonist out of the board. I do like the blast effects, even just to protect us in a way. Uh, I do like the Force of Vigor, even if it's just a one for one with Food Chain or even a two for one. Fiery Justice is interesting, especially just to try to clear the board. But I do like blast effects to make sure that canonists resolve. And then hopefully mums are, are good enough to protect my creatures while they're in play. Let's gonna quickly have a look. So we have three cards. Most likely these nine cards. I'm pretty happy to drop a punishing fire. Uh, the Oof is actually quite interesting. The Gutduck T can come out. The Clothis does answer the Uro side of things, so I don't mind Clothis. Clothis? Clothis? Um, it's tough. There's not many, like, bad cards. I could see a drop in Thalia. As in bringing in the, the two canonists for the Teague and the Thalia. Oof's okay. I think Oof is okay because it does stop Walking Blister. So they do have to deal with Oof before they can, can essentially go off. They can create a massive Walking Blister, but at the same time, I, I, think, I think Oof is worth its spot because of that. Especially with Protection in the deck, it seems okay. Beast gets through... Uh, Ice Vanquadal, which I probably have to look at because they are playing Snow-Covered Lands. I could see myself dropping down on a Noble Hierarch. So really just trimming. Excavator seems okay. But I think because we're bringing in at least one Choke, I could trade the Excavator for a Choke. Because they kind of do similar things. Excavator there mainly to replay Wasteland. And Choke just making sure that their lands only tap once for, for Blue Mana if it does make it into play. So that's five. Maybe it's just like two, two. Maybe the Justice isn't needed. Hmm. Library still seems really good as well, because they can't really pressure me too much. They obviously have big cards in like Miss Holy Griffin and Uro, but I think this is okay. Yeah, Clothis might just be the cut, and then I can rely on these cards. So it's these six for these six. Alright. So, uh, yes, 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 no, 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 one more, Tuthalia, Noble, Clothis, I think this is fine. I'm pretty happy to submit this. Punishing Fire, quite nice, because you can kill a Mistoli Griffin to try to get it to the graveyard instead of uh, putting it in exile with Swords to Plushes. But 
but hopefully it's okay. This is probably a matchup where I do like Kusali Prime Mage over Knight of Autumn, because then you can actually uh, have some removal effect in their turn for food chain. Whereas Knight of Autumn, as you saw there, does need to be cast in your turn and can be a little bit harder to resolve. Um, I don't mind this. Turn one noble, turn two knight. Opponent kept seven. If they play a non-basic here, I don't mind just wasteland into green suns again. Okay. Uh, I'm going to hide the wasteland here. I'm going to play the Caracas. I think my best draw is probably just Thalia or a Canonist, some sort of hate bear. Yeah, Moss, if I didn't run the uh, the Force of Vigor in the board, I could definitely see Kusali main deck and then uh, Cyborg. Uh, what's it called? Um, Cyborg Knight of Autumn. Nice. The big question is what do I want to do with these with these green suns? Blast is nice. I don't mind just attacking here for four. They don't currently have Death Touch on Ice Fang Quattle, which is nice. And then I think it's just going to be Birds of Paradise Hold Up Blast. And if they do cast an Ice Fang here, I'm pretty happy to blast this. Just so they don't draw a card off it. It also will become a nuisance down the line for the knight. It also keeps another snow permanent off the field, so another snow, uh, you know, ice fang isn't going to be uh, lethal, which is nice. Ponder chose to not shuffle. Okay. Green Suns for Questing Beast is interesting. I could definitely see an attack first, but if I want to attack, I probably want to attack with Questing Beast. They don't currently have up uh, Ice Fang Quarter, which is nice. Let's try that. Priest. Ah, uh, we're not playing, um... We're not playing Clothus, which would have been a nice target in response to this. But that's okay. I do get to get in. Yeah, Beast is really fun. A fetch here would be tough because it, it could resemble... Okay, so now they're not currently resembling Ice Fang. But they are resembling Sylvan Library. They're also attacking. Okay. Cradle. 
doesn't do a whole lot here. We still don't have an actual forest or plains to sack to the night, so I just have to attack. <laughs> no, all good. <laughs> um, something like uh, Uro would be really strong for my opponent here. Especially with Caracas open. Recruiter. Okay. Just gonna six here. So now I really need an answer to collect for a Containment Priest. Yeah, that's not going to do it. Okay. Why is this deck named Maverick? Uh, I believe that the original creator of the deck uh, had the username Maverick with the at sign as the A. Uh, if you want to find out more, it's commonplace played in saloons. <laughs> Nothing. That's really interesting. What is my opponent holding up here? Huh. Hmm. So there are five cards. One is Walking Ballista. I kind of want to attack with both. We do We do just have to attack into an Ice Fang, which is a little bit rough. We do have the Swords to Plowshares, but I kind of want to use that on the, on the uh, Containment Priest. But if, if they're in a position where they just have to block with the Priest, I'm not unhappy. They do have Ice Fang. Okay... I could plow and then go and get questing beast, but they do have Caracas, so they can return beast to my hand, which is tough. I am gonna swords containment priest here. Okay. Send a message with bird. This is fine. They do block. Okay. Um, so I can play Thalia here, which is three mana, four mana. So I can still green suns for two, which is nice. And even if they force that, we still get three mana left over, which is pretty cool. Oh, another priest. Rough. Can't beat second priest. Right. 
they go and get Miss Tolly and Eternal Scourge. Cool. They don't play Eternal Scourge. Interesting. Unfortunately, there's not enough uh, reactive spells this game. Even just like, you know, turn 9 and this is our first land that interacts with Knight, which is a little bit tough. But we, we did keep it. I'm going to get a jumper real quick. I'll be back in a second. Nice. <laughs> Not at all. Uh, I think, yeah, Clothis is an interesting one. It does allow you to grind, which is kind of nice. Um, and is a, a slight answer to Uro. But tough. I definitely feel like there were more interactive cards in the board. Containment Priest is rough. That is a, a good, good card against uh, Green Suns. Oh, this jump is so cozy. <laughs> Hey Valakut, welcome. I hope you're well. We currently played against uh, Doomsday, 02. Uh, we got up against... What did we get up against, chat? Uh, blue, red, uh, Omni Sneak, I assume. And then went down to Food Chain, 2 Food Chain was tough. Really need multiple answers. I guess Abrupt Decay, so the Black Splash probably seems better against uh, 
food chain because you can have some interaction with the early creatures with Plague Engineer. Chain of Smoke Delvia, we have, which is pretty nice. Um, we got to do things like uh, wait for them to go to zero cards and then swords the creature, which is pretty good. Um, yeah, that was the main one. <laughs> we played against it on DNT uh, on Sunday night, I, I believe, or maybe Monday night. Ooh. Interesting, yeah, interesting combo. I've seen some pretty interesting builds as well. Uh, some Aether Vial builds with like a like four color version with like uh, white for cards like Mother Runes and uh, Meddling Mage for protection, which is kind of cool. Um, just finishing up as well a piece on the greensunzim.com, which is the next uh, matchup analysis with uh, Ali from the Channel Fireball video for Lands vs Maverick for the Lands vs Maverick matchup, which is very cool. So that should hopefully be out this weekend, uh, which is nice because content, uh, yeah, it's been pretty, been a slog in life. So uh, getting content out recently has not been at the top of priority but having this out will be really nice just to get out at least one thing this month and then uh do a wrap up probably of the uh the march and april metagame for maverick in early april instead of getting out a march one late this month it's a bit it's a bit late so i'd rather put it all all nicely wrapped up into one article all right let's do this up against Jonoi. Interesting hand. I actually don't mind this hand against Delva. I am going to keep it. I'm not too sure if my opponent is on Delva, but I think this is a hand that I'm pretty happy to see what happens. Scalding Tarn Volk would be amazing. Opponent knows. Opponent knows. Honda chose to not shuffle. Okay. So they'll obviously pretty happy with what they found. Scoos. I'm going to lead on Tega pass. This could mean we have crop rotation. Could be uh, lands for all my opponent knows. Wasteland, that's fine. It's fine. Punishing fire. I'm gonna lead on wasteland here. I don't wanna lose my other blue source. Oh, sorry, green source. But now that my opponent knows to play around wasteland, it's a little bit a little bit worse. Yeah. Sprite Dragon, okay. Unfortunately, Punishing Fire getting hit by Force Negation is actually pretty rough because it does get exiled. But we'll see what happens here. So I can either play the Grove or I can fetch for a Taiga. I kind of like keeping the fetch in case we just want to get Savannah. Days is pretty good. This Sprite Dragon might just get too big now, which is pretty rough. Hmm. Yeah, 
Yeah, at least we can try to play this out like we're on lands. But because Lance has Maze of Ith, I don't think they would concede too early. Yeah, Sprite's very hard to deal with. Especially if you're Punishing Fires. If you have Punishing Fires in your opening hand, and then you don't draw into your Sword Supply shares, or if you draw into your Swords and use them on Delvers and Young Primancers, and then you don't have an answer for Sprite, it can be really tough, so... That's something to remember. Okay, that's definitely a start. Okay, that's nice. And now we can actually return Punishing Fire, which is nice. I think that's better than playing out Scavenging Ooze, so I am going to return that. Opponent also missed, they didn't miss a land drop last turn, they dazed the turn before, so. I do want all my lands here because getting cloths down through a, uh, a daze would be huge. Okay, so it's just going to be blue red delver as well. So true name here, pretty good. But we do have clothes, bone crusher. Okay. Swords. Alright, land. Clothus. Nice. That's pretty huge. They could have um Ethereal Forager, which would be pretty good because it exiles their graveyard. But we'll see how this plays out. Because getting close down is huge. Outside of like Brazen Borrow or Bounce, we're looking pretty good. Interesting to go after Grove. That makes me think they have an answer to the clothes. Clothes? I always get the name wrong. Because uh, this can make red or green mana. Maybe they're considering the return of Punishing Fire also really good. Can just six here as well. Surely it's bounce time. Snap. Okay. Snap Ponder, yeah. That's interesting. What did Ponder do? Chose to shuffle. Okay. Planes. Planes is nice. Um, so here I have an interesting decision. I can either take out the Brainstorm, which they currently can't Snapcaster. Uh, gain two, draw two. Uh, gain two, they drain two. Or... I can take out a land and try to Punishing Fire the Snapcaster, which just takes it off the field as well, which is kind of nice. I don't mind that. Let's take out Wasteland. Make a red mana. Use that. Okay. Planes. Play Mum, play Scoos. And just really try to flood the board with threats they have to answer. And maybe we can start turning this around. I'm just going to 6 here as well, because there's not much I can do in that turn. This feels like, yeah, there it is. But we do have the source of plush shares, which is really nice. So not too bad there. Sprite Dragon's okay as well. They have two cards left. I actually don't mind the double block here. Because what's my next turn? Uh, it's probably just Punishing Fire this, and then Swords this. 
And then we, we then we have the clothes in place. So I think this is actually better. I think this is okay. There's some... There's some thought of going down to five, six. Let's let's quickly think about this. We've got 21 minutes. If we let this happen, we take uh, five damage and go to six. Just block with mum is rough. I think if I if I am gonna block, I'm gonna try to kill the bone crusher. It's a question of, does Screws have a role in this matchup? There's currently no creatures in the graveyard. So if I do block with Mum, it does put a creature in the bin. Punishing Fire does put Sprite Dragon in the bin, which is interesting. Hmm. This is actually probably screenshot worthy. And then we can go and ask some questions. It's for later. You value the Scooze a lot. The Scooze is pretty strong, but I also feel like Clothis is playing the role of Scooze in this matchup. And if I can put three cards in the bin to eat, then Cloths only gets better. I, I am going to double block. I'm going to put that in there. I'm going to try to fill the graveyard up and then ride Cloths to victory. Two cards left. Okay. Uh, so we need a red source. Let's take out the wasteland. Make a red. Punishing fire sprite dragon. Do they respond? They don't. Let's swords this. Do they respond? They don't. Nice. Ah, I should have played the land first so I could respond here and actually get back the Punishing Fire. That was a misplay. My only thought was that I can play the Windswept Heat to go get uh, Dried Arbor, so I didn't even think of this. But that's that's definitely something to consider. Uh, I'm definitely using this. It means they can't like ponder into another 3-drop unless they have land into that. So, a, a little bit of an oops, but I, I think we're in a pretty good position. Delver's pretty strong. I probably also want to keep this for red mana just in case we draw into something and I don't want to use the clots for red mana. Oof. Okay, Oof is pretty dead. But it is pressure. Forked Bolt. Okay. So Forked Bolt in hand. Hex Drinker. Nice. Attack first. 10 is rough because it's a uh, three, six, seven. Okay, it's, it's, we're not in multiple range yet, but it's getting pretty close. So let's go hex and then tick it up. I could see a world where they even daze this just to stop me, yeah, from being able to tick it up. Which at least means that the Hex Drinker is eating one. I'm not going to use the Wasteland here. I 
Hextricker gains me gains me one life, because Fork Bolt can be one and one to me. Green Suns would be really nice. Green Suns for Scrib Ranger would be awesome. Bounce that. Okay. Forest. I'm not going to play this. Now we're in a tough position because Bolt also gets there. There it is. Delva. Uh, I love the chokes. I like the fiery justice. I like the blast effects. Um, I don't like the Teague, the Oof, the Knight of Autumn, Sylvan Library. Hmm. Hmm. Probably Cradle. I don't think this is a matchup where Cradle is that great. They do keep you down on creatures a lot. This is an interesting one. I do like all three just in case, just so I, I know that I have one, hopefully have one when they cast True Name Nemesis so I can deal with it on the stack. Outside of True Name on the field, we have to race it with Questing Beast or maybe Clothis. I'm just going to drop the second library. Library is interesting though, because although they are quite an aggressive Delver deck, there are situations where we just run out of cards pretty early on and Sylvan Library really allows you to get back into the game. But I think it is just Sylvan Library. Yeah. I could see like a trim on Green Suns. This isn't really a matchup where that comes into, comes into consideration. That often. Like there's not one creature we're dying to find. So you could cut down on a Green Suns. What adult beverage is that? This is a Stone and Wood, a Pacific Ale, in an MTG Mate beer coaster. Very nice. MTG Mate, a sponsor of the channel, a Australian online card seller where you can get 5% off singles with code Dukes, which is cool. You love that beer? It's good beer. It goes down really easily. It's great on a summer's day or a winter's morning, which is quite lovely. Damn good beer. Mm. I started drinking at 12. Hermosphere IPA. Very nice. Very nice indeed. Alright. Maybe the big play there was uh, blocking with the mum and the scavenging news. Maybe the game would have been different if we didn't do that. Yikes. Okay. Keep this. Uh, I'm going to bottom one green suns. I could potentially bottom the knight. And keep both green suns. That's interesting. Maybe that's better. In case my opponent's really aggressive and I want to get out mana early on. I'm actually okay with that. You're doing a dry April? Nice. Nice. That's awesome. Very good on you. Very cool. I apologize for drinking. I will I will finish this beer quickly. <laughs> what are foothills? Folk. 
Creodine. Okay. That's definitely interesting. Because Fork Bolt here is pretty rough if I, if I play out the Mum next turn. I could try to Green Signs for Scrib Ranger, but seeing my opponent put two cards on bottom, maybe we can just draw Wasteland? We can't. Okay. The Broken Beer Tap? No. Interesting. I assume this is Mark from uh, Creole. This feels like Fork Bolt. Oh, just Lightning Bolt. Okay. Delver is going to be fine. Ramming up. Okay. Getting closer. I'm going to green suns here for just the birds of paradise and hold up pyroblast. And then next turn, try to get this ramen up going. Please don't flip Fork Bolt. Okay. <laughs> very true, Wolf. Very true. Opponent having a good thing. Bolt the bird, rough. This doesn't play around days on the Pyroblast, but I think this is okay. I do want to start getting in some some damage. But maybe the Pyroblast should have been held back. The, my only thing is that because we have the true name, I'm not so scared of uh, Questing Beast of our true name now because of Questing Beast. I really just want that to resolve. Finish 3-2. Nice. What did you go down to? What did you get up against? Lost to Dredge. Wasteland. It's pretty good. Interesting. No Wasteland yet. Letting us untap is not correct, because then we could have Scrib Ranger. Okay. We will fetch. There you go. See if Ramanap gets down. This would be pretty huge. I don't have the luxury of playing with, with Pyroblast yet. Maybe I could. Maybe I could be more patient, but I'm pretty happy here to get back the Windswept Teeth and then just hold up Pyroblast. Pretty happy to pyroblast this because that's just a bolt. Oh, it was lethal? No, I didn't even pick up on that. Force. Force is pretty strong. Alright, the race is on.
This is going to be real tough. I kind of have to draw into swords and get the questing beast hit. Hmm. Scrib is pretty nice. I'm definitely taking five next turn because there's definitely a, a force on something here. I'd probably rather the questing beast get forced. And then get Scrib next turn. Because then I also have Noble free, which means that I can play Scrib uh, kind of around uh, removal as well. Interesting. I could have actually held this to not get the extra counter on the sprite, but I think playing this is just so good. Okay, interesting. Maybe they're playing to just try to protect the queen and just anything that can block the sprite dragon or insect vibration, just do that. Caracas. Yikes. Did not expect Caracas out of uh, blue red. I think because they have the force, they're not scared of the Questing Beast on my turn, and it is why they were happy to use the Krakus there, but they definitely could, just in case that I had, like, some sort of counter spell, like if I joined a Pyroblast. Ooze. I don't mind Ooze as a bait for the force. So let's tap like this. Spell snare, rough. What deck are we playing? We are playing a uh, green, white, red maverick. Four, five, six, seven, eight. So close. I think now I just want to make sure, like, if they have a, a blue card and force, they have blue card and force. But if not, then we get Scrib Ranger. I just hope they don't have blue card force. Maybe Spell Snare was their blue card. Okay. It's definitely a start. Snare's pretty sweet. I've always really liked it. Uh, happy not to do anything here. Yeah. Land, force, and then something else. They don't attack. Interesting. Did not expect that. Wasteland, that's pretty nice. Hit Caracas. They're going to float white. Makes sense. So now they can hard cast force. <laughs> Pretty happy just to go to combat here. Attack with a... Uh, Ramanap? 
with Exalted. I could attack with Scrib Ranger as well, but I think this is fine. Nice. And the question is, do I even want to play the Questing Beast? It means it's six. I think I do. Yeah. Yeah. Because we get to block at least one creature, I think this is fine. You now they have to have like bolt bolt. Wasteland does nothing. Relic is okay. Guess I get some another draw. Okay. Nice. Whew. I think we just send this back. Nothing that I would change. Hey, look at boring. Welcome. I'm sure you've been here for a while, but very cool to see you in chat. I think I'd send this back, to be fair. Nothing that I really want from the board. Pyroblast is really nice because it also answers Sprite Dragon. So I'm pretty happy that my opponent isn't playing something like Young Pyromancer, which can be a little bit uh, easier to control with Maverick with bigger creatures. But Young Pyromancer in a really fast hand can be pretty brutal. Your opponent doesn't really care about your 6-6 six, six Knight when you have, you know, 8 or 6 or 8 tokens that are just swinging in for, uh, for damage every turn. But yeah, maybe this all comes back to game one. Uh, and how we double blocked with uh, Scavenging Ooze and Mother of Runes instead of keeping them alive and taking the hit. Which would have been pretty interesting. Um, I don't mind this hand. The Fiery Confluence can be really good. It can be really bad. But turn one moment to turn to Thalia. I'm pretty happy for that. I think this hand is a little bit slow, obviously with no instant speed removal, that I would love to see my opponent turn one Preordain or Ponder instead of turn one Delver. Or Mountain, that's fine. Swords is nice. I assume my opponent has a has some sort of removal spell here, but I'm just going to keep playing on curve as much as possible. That's fine. Wasteland's okay. I don't went to six as well, or maybe lower. I do want to get double wastelanded there, so I'm going to keep the savannah until I have to. Okay. Now we're looking pretty strong. Nice. Wow, nothing for my opponent. It's pretty good. Wasteland. Okay. Just going to hold up the grove here. I'm not going to show the wasteland yet. Next, next time we can questing beast. Blue. Okay. No double Thalia. That would be pretty nice. I think if my opponent gets rid of Thalia here, I'm happy just to play the second Thalia. Sprite Dragon's fine. I am going to Swords this, just to get it out of the way, and then I get to cast Questing Beast next turn anyway, so... I just want to get off the field. 
don't really have to, but I think I'm in, in just such a good position here that I'm happy just to slam Questing Beast here. And start getting in. Yeah, they're in a pretty bad spot. They need something like Caracas into removal spell for Thalia. So, we do have the Wasteland though for Caracas, which is nice. And a backup Thalia, so it is looking pretty grim for them. They they just had a... They obviously mulled to 6 and then had a pretty bad draw with the, the Mountain Pass. Brazen Borrower Bounce, not too bad here either. As a way just to buy some time. But it's it's gonna be a slog. I kinda hope they play TNN. Please? Stomp. Okay, that's fine. We have a second Thalia. Swords. Alright. Oh, I guess they could have Submerge. Maybe that's why they're waiting. No. Yeah, not usually a big fan of TNN, but here, I, I have time for it. I really do. Second Thalia. Nice. Land pass. They could hard cast Bone Crusher, which does block the Questing Beast, but we do have Fiery Justice as a nice out. So Bone Crusher is deals two damage to me when I target it. Okay. Yeah, I think plowing it is better than anything else. They can't force it, which is nice. Choke? Green Suns. One, two, three. Can Green Suns for three here, which is pretty nice. Oh, we can also... Ah, uh, we can't Green Suns for... Hex Trinker. Definitely casting it. Doesn't really matter what I get, thankfully, but I'm just going to get... Uh, Clothus. It's a bit harder for my opponent to deal with. Devotion is currently at four, uh, and it needs seven, so three more. Questing Beast really showing its true powers here, especially against the Bolt deck. Green ball lightning off the top one time. <laughs> I feel like Questing Beast is just the green ball lightning. Oh no, there actually is one. I think it's a six one. This is still lethal because Clothus is two. Questing Beast can't be blocked by Delver. So they have to have something like Brazen Borrower here. Caracas for me would be kind of cool here. But I feel like they have some sort of bounce effect, probably on the Clothus. Submerge. That's still fine. We're going to draw it now. Eat your bolt. Maybe they have force? Okay. 
Cool. Put you to one or block with your Delver. Go to one, okay. Interesting. But how do they beat Clothis if they're going to brainstorm this turn? They have to do something else because they don't have the mana for it. Desert of Progenitus? Oh, rough. Okay. But now they're dead to Clothus. What could it be? Land into Relic? But I just target myself. Yeah, they can't even surgical or do anything. Yeah, tough. Tough spot. I'll take it though. Beating Delve is always a, a fun time. Fairy Macabre is the only out. I guess that, that does buy them a turn. That is correct. And wouldn't submerge the Clothis? Yeah. Which is really nice. Very happy that uh, the Clothis can't be submerged. It's just an enchantment. Have I ever attacked with Clothis? I, I don't think I have. I don't think I have. I think if you get to the stage where that is occurring, it's either you're, you've already won and your opponent concedes. Yeah, I don't think I have. I don't think I have. I haven't been able to green suns with containment priest in play to get clothes yet either i do want to make sure that actually happens on mtgo because uh newton uh hello newton reached out to see if that was actually possible because he was looking at playing clothes in his green suns package uh against containment priest decks gonna mull this pretty uh pretty high up uh gonna keep this and bottom the cradle seems like a pretty nice hand Turn two, we have either Punishing Fire, Sylvan Library, or Clothis, which is nice. Yeah, so uh, Clothis isn't seen as a creature uh, when it's in as a Green Sun's target. So unless you have Devotion in play, you can still Green Sun's for uh, Clothis, which is nice. Keep this, bottom this. Alright, I'm going to give away that we're on red, because I want to keep the Windswept Heath for the Sylvan Library in case we just have lands on top and I don't want to pay for them. I'd rather keep my life for something else. Up against Rebob on six cards. Ancient Tomb, okay. Mox, cool. Urza, mm-hmm. Nothing. Maybe holding up. I think I'm, ha I'm just going to happy, happy to pass here with Punishing Fire. So I am going to attack for one. That's pretty free. Because if they have a uh, Hull Breacher here. We do get to uh, kill it, so this is fine. 
Uh, let's go for Savannah. Surely their last two cards aren't Force, force Blue card. Okay, nice. <laughs> that feels pretty good, because I feel like my opponent maybe had the other... Maybe just one half. Maybe they just had the Hull Breacher. Blue? Okay. Two cards left. They do have four mana here. Nice set. Okay. Not too bad. But that is going to be tough. Echo of Eons. Okay. Big question is, do they have LED as well? They haven't used their baubles yet because they want the Mox Opal online, but maybe they use them this turn. I do want to attack the Narset here so that if they do want to use it, they have to lose it. And then it's pr it's probably Clothis here. Remanap's interesting, but I think Cloth is just is just a little bit more pressure. Remanap does attack Narset. That's very true, and that's a huge reason to play it over Clothis. All right, opponent. Please don't kill us. We know one card is Echo. Two cards left. Two. Or well, they could just cast hard cast Echo here, right? It's a six drop. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's pretty good. Especially if they find LED as well. I think the best... Oh, we actually drew Knight of Autumn, which is actually pretty funny, because that's probably one of the relevant cards we can draw into. The other one is probably just Collector Oof, or a Green Suns, so we do have a little bit of time. Just a pass back. Okay. Pretty good for us. There you go. Alright. Let's attack Narset. Hmm. I think I'm okay taking out the Mox Opal. I think the knight in my hand during their turn is just not going to be a good time. I feel like with eight cards or nine cards in hand next turn, my opponent definitely has a way to wheel in a, in a way. So I probably just want to get value off knight here and deal with the Mox Opal. Yeah, they know my hand. All right. This does take them off double blue for Urza, but I assume they have another blue source in their hand. So I... Hmm. Those are really good as well, because then even Oof at the top is not the greatest. Sai, okay. Sai as a 1-4 is really strong here. Hey C4, welcome. I hope you're well. Charles for one, nice. 
Questing Beast would actually be pretty good here, off like a Green Sun Zenith. Emery. LEDs for days. Just had a ton of coffee and now overly hyped about anything. Nice. You should uh, you should get overly hyped about Maverick. <laughs> this is looking tough. Canopy is another draw. And I can draw here, which is nice. Thalia. Okay. Oh, player. And there's no great attacks here because of Psy. So. Moss asking the uh, the real questions. The three four just gets blocked by Psy. So I'd probably rather just keep it back. I played the Thalia, so I could have done that first. Pull out their graveyard here. We can just six here as well. Hey C4, a huge thank you for the subscription. That is very nice. Uh, hope you're well. Big fan of uh, coffee, which is nice. I'm also a big fan of coffee. I know Jack, the jig is always up, is always a big fan of coffee as well. Ugh. All right. We do still have, uh, as a, we do still have Questing Beast as a nice out. And we have two draws, which is nice. Questing Beast would be mint because it also has Exalted off Noble Hierarch. You like this Moss Cardigan? <laughs> yeah, a Moss Cardigan would actually be pretty interesting. I'm trying to picture a Moss Cardigan. I'm trying to picture like when I've dived into the ocean and just dived into a bunch of seaweed and then stood up and there's just seaweed everywhere. All right, we need some Questing Beasts in chat. We need some Questing Beasts here because that's the only way out of this. We need some beasts. I want to see your beasts, people. Please, please send me some beasts. So close. Um, what did my opponent grab? Skyship. Okay. I'd rather just canopy here. We're, we're doing it. We're doing it. Oh! <laughs> yes! Oh, yeah! <laughs> so good. So good. So good. So good. Yes. Yes, chat. Yes. Oh, so good. Play to your outs. Oh, so nice. Beastie boys are on. Yes. Very cool. All right, attack them. Nice. This is a two-turn clock as well. And Sky Shovron only deals three. So Questing Beast could just steal this game. All right. They have to play Urza. Yeah, Urza's the, the big one here. They do have seven cards, so... Hull Breacher is another out. Urza Construct is going to be huge. A 
opponent with seven cards. We know one is Sky Sovereign Sky Ship. I probably said Sky too many times there. Is this just ship? It is just ship. This is fine. Oh, they can crew it to block. Okay. Hmm. Kill Thalia. Okay. Can they crew it? Can you crew with multiples? Tap any number of creatures. Okay. I guess that also gets around Collector Oof. We do have an Oof. So we can we can spin it again. We can spin it again, people. And we can draw into Collector Oof. Caracas is a lot better. But Caracas is only one one draw because the canopy we have to play a land for turn. So we can't play canopy, draw a card, draw Caracas. And we get back Bauble. Okay. Believe? Alright. Alright, people. Why top deck in the top two when you can top deck in the top one? Alright. To get in the mood, let's get some beasts back in chat. We need some beasts. Let's get some beasts. Let's get some green suns. Playing the chalice. Alright. Alright. All right. You got it. Chalice on zero is very interesting. Maybe they think they can just get there with flyers, perhaps? All right. Ah, doesn't do it. But we do get a draw. We could nearly draw into swords. Oh, we can draw into Punishing Fire. We can draw into Punishing Fire, people. <sighs> Close. So the big question is, am I just dead if I don't attack? Blue guy can sack their chalice, that is correct. I probably just- Oh, the chalice. Apologies. That was just poor. That was just poor. There's no need to play that. So I can get rid of the Sky Sovereign. If I don't get rid of the Sky Sovereign, I take 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Pretty close to lethal. So I think the play is to just take the take a draw. I guess I don't mind the Sky Sovereign trade. If they swing with boat, they die. That's very true. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, boat doesn't hit players. Okay. Yeah. Thanks for pointing that out. Ah, oh, that draw was so nice. Even though Beast is obviously stuck a little bit now. So good. Yeah, I think uh, with uh, Punishing Fire also being an out and us having Canopy in the bin meaning we can draw two cards a turn, I'm pretty happy about that. The Beast Quest is on a pause. Season 2 coming out. Netflix. 2023. This feels like Urza. Could also be Khan. That's okay. Hey Odysseus, welcome. I hope you're well. Hey Lynn Chalice, big congratulations on your current finishes with uh, Abzan Depths. Very cool to see. They're gonna kill the Chalice, that is a-okay. 
Hey, Magrippa. So really looking, really looking for a... Uh, Were we dead if they plussed on the boat? Um, that's an interesting question. I think it loses flying if they make it a creature. I'm not sure. Does does the plus one make it lose flying? That's a good question. All right. What can we do here? Thalia. Land. Cradle. Sack this. Punishing five, baby. Come on. Ah, doesn't do it because the chalice. Hmm. I can't sort the sky ship, unfortunately, because of the chalice on one. So I think we just have to pass here. They do need another soul land. Hmm. They could also get bridge, I guess, if they really wanted to. But. Hmm. Another, yeah, it's, yeah, this is a tough one. One more turn. One more turn. It's just so nice to have something like a, um, a Caracas or a Punishing Fire. One, two, three, four, Urza. Okay. They do get a big dude here. That's okay. We still have two draws. Two more draws. Ah, uh, of course. They can, yeah, they can get Lattice and just cast it. Ballista. Interesting. They got Ballista. Unless they already got... No, they didn't get Lattice because they ticked up Khan. Yeah, they got Skyship and then Ballista. Maybe they just didn't see it. Sadly, Chalice Tap still means Chalice works. <laughs> That's always a tough one. They they haven't re revealed Lattice yet, so they don't play Lattice main deck. I'm assuming that it's playing Ballista as a big creature. Because they have to tap, you know, like, five, probably, f like, ten, at least, for Ballista if they want to cast it here. Yeah, Wide Hyena, I think that as well. So hopefully they don't go after the Ramanap. That would be brutal. Shatterstorm? Nice. Okay, they're going to go for Ballista. What do they try to kill here? I kind of hope they go after the questing beast and not the ramen app. My only thought on why they didn't go for Lattice is maybe they saw that um, Ballista was an option because I had creatures in play and then realized after that. Hey Jade, thanks for the follow. Uh, let me know where you're from. If you play Legacy, what do you play in Legacy?
They can cruise ship, that's true. They didn't. Okay. Live drawers. Scavenging you is not a live drawer. I think it's just canopy here. Yeah. Canopy. I guess we can eat some stuff, which is kind of nice. Or draw. Punishing fire. Hey yo! Ah, so close. Eat Urza. Okay. Uh, eat Echo. UK only play EDH or Proxy Modern Legacy. I know that you guys have a pretty good proxy setup uh, over there, which is kind of cool to see. Um, Thalia. Yeah, I think now I'm pretty happy to attack with the questing beast. They can just block with the walking blister, but they could also just sky ship. But I think that's probably better than anything else we can currently do. It's a tough spot. This does take the sky ship off the field, which I think is worth it. <laughs> Killing yourself with the thought seeds is a very interesting one. I've definitely had players with Adnors where I believe they have the kill and they've killed themselves by revealing more cards. But thought seizing yourself is a or thought seizing after being on two life is a, is a new one. They get to recast the sky ship. Recast it. Um, we can respond to Emery with eating it, but then they could tick down Khan, which is interesting. So we'll see how this plays out. Hey Boyd, welcome. Hull Breacher. Okay. That's pretty good. Charles on one doing so much work. Is this a hard cast Aeons? Yeah. Alright. Oh, we can draw Punishing Fire here. No, we can't. Can we? No. Ah, of course. It's except the card that you draw. Oh, I should respond to this, definitely. Nice. Small win. Small win. Ah, uh, the LED, that's fine. I guess they can just lattice here with double LED. Opal, okay. They haven't killed us yet, yeah. I'm just waiting for for an untap. Because if I can untap, I do have the chance of drawing Punishing Fire. I'm just glad we got the Questing Beast draw. That was very cool. That's my Lightning Helix moment. If Lightning Helix did <laughs> gain 2, draw 2, instead of gain 3, draw 3. Alright, treasure gone. 
Treasure gone. Treasure gone. Treasure gone. Echo. Okay. The only thing I hope here is that my opponent casts something before flashing back Echo. Because then we can eat it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it's funny. I feel like my opponent could have got there. This is game one. My opponent could have got there if they just kept going for their Thopters in the air, but... Cool to see. I mean, this deck does seem pretty fun once you have a lot of mana going. Now we see the Lattice, most likely. Yeah, could have tapped the, the, uh, the treasures with Urza. It's definitely very true. I believe that's it, but... No attacks, okay. I don't even want to draw here. I don't want to draw Punishing Fire. Okay. It's actually very cool to see Mum in an old border. That is very cool. Oh my god! No! No! <laughs> Swing with everything! <laughs> uh. Do we have outs? We do not have outs. But we do get to see more of what our opponent is trying to do. They could even tap the Ancient Tomb. They could tap the Ancient Tomb. That's our out. The out is, is Ancient Tomb being tapped. All right, chat. Real question is, uh, is Leyline good in this matchup? I don't think it answers enough, but it doesn't answer a large quantity of things, but is the quality of what it hits worth it? It does hit Emery and Echo. They're the main things, I believe. You mull to Leyline? Interesting. All right, there we go. Um, so post board, uh, I think it's just these eight. I don't think the ch the chokes or any of that is needed. The the fiery justice is actually pretty interesting. So that's nine cards. I'm going to ask you, chat, what do you think should be taken out? I'm going to go to the bathroom. I'll be back in two seconds.
All right. The P fires and justice. I can definitely see mums getting cut. There is that new card, but I don't think that's enough. Uh, the T does stop the Eons, but hopefully we have Leyline in play. Punishing Fire is interesting. Maybe I don't need that. Hex. Teague stops Khan and Echoes, yeah. Bring in Canonist. I don't think Canonist does enough because it doesn't stop uh, non artifact. It only stops non artifact. I could see a library going. That's pretty clean. I don't mind this. Yeah, Ooze is pretty interesting. Maybe Ooze is just not where I want to be if I have the Ley Lines. Ooze is good if I if I don't have an opening Ley Line, but have like a Pyroblast hand. I don't mind that. Let's see how this goes. And then hopefully there's a game three and we can maybe look at the sideboard after as well. Well. I still think this is brilliant because it's turned to Oof with Pyroblast backup. Yeah, this is, this is probably a, a keep that I would keep without Leyline. Opponent also keeps seven. Um, I could hold up Pyroblast here, but I think it's just too good to go Noble, noble Hierarch. I could just lose. <laughs> I could just lose if I don't hold up Pyroblast, but I think turn one, turn one Noble is okay. Because then if I don't draw a land, I don't have turn two Oof. Yeah, I think just, I think if I'm being too defensive from as early as turn one, then it's really tough. And here, if I draw into a land, I get to hold up the blast effect, which is nice. Okay, that's the start that I want to see. Um... Definitely playing Dried Alba. I think it might just be Collect Oof here. Instead of Hold Up Pyroblast. Force Pitching Azo. Okay. I guess Chalice for one here would be pretty good. Well, they kept a one lander. Okay. Um, I could Green Sun's Fatigue. I think I'm happy just to hold up Pyroblast and attack with Dried Arbor. Oh, I also had the option of... Uh, no, this is fine. With Scrib Ranger, I can't hold up Pyroblast because I can't return or untap the Grove. Oh, four mana. Yep. Oh, they have two cards left. Let us hope. We do also have the swords, so I guess they don't need... Yeah, I could have left that, but... I think Pyroblasting is pretty nice, because then they have a massive creature as well. Okay. I kind of want to uh, want a Green Suns for Galactig here. I can't. Was I supposed to use the Grove? This is still fine. Hmm. Yeah, untap, return. 
play. Um, I am happy to attack because I can still hold that play if I really want to by returning the dried upper. Hey, Orange Shield. Very cool. I'm glad to hear you're, uh, you're going ahead with DNT. Really good deck to get practice into. The more reps, the better. The more reps, the better. Yikes. This feels like an echo. If they're playing the city. Oh, playing the ancient tomb. Yeah. I'd probably like to pyroblast this and then let them use the LED. And at least we get a shuffle here. Okay, not the worst. We have Wasteland and Ancient Tomb and then Green Sun's Fatigue. That seems okay. Oh, Oof is back in the deck. Stress Daddy, that is why you are here. Thank you very much. <laughs> too kind, Mark, too kind. Float and then sack the pedal. Okay. Narset or... Okay. This is still okay. This is still pretty good. Oh, what are you doing? No. Okay, that's fine. Ooh, Elemental Blast. Okay. Okay. So I think here then we go... 1, 2... Untap, return... 3... Green Suns for 2... And now we have red mana open if they do have force. Nice. Yes. Oh, that feels good. Nice. Collector oof. Wasteland. Wasteland. Oh, and... Attack Narset. Now they can't even attack the Narset. That's pretty nice. Nice, there we go. Very cool. Hull Breacher? Okay, that's just the same as Narset, right? Beast. Okay. Two, three, four. Beast is nice, but we do also just have Punishing Fire. I think that's better. One at Narset, two at them. Probably could have played the Dried Arbor there, that's probably correct, just because I'm not using this mana anyway. I might as well let this have its turn of just doing nothing. Um. Hager, green, untap this, return this, play Sylvan Library. Opponent using a lot of a lot of time here. So they're gonna have to have a really explosive one. They're still playing on. Interesting. Cradle, perfect. I actually am just gonna pay for all of these. Um, three for five mana. Hmm. Yeah, I think Teague is pretty good here. Can I... One, two, I can't, yeah.
Ooh, I guess I shouldn't have attacked with that because of Hull Breacher. Yeah, that was, that, was, that, was, that was bad by me. Apologies. We also can get back Punishing Fire, so there's a few things we can do here. But opponent is using their time, which is really interesting. They must think they have some sort of out here. I'm not too sure why they're still playing. But opponent happy to play, so I'm happy to play. I kind of wanted to not attack with everything there and just keep them... I, I, I don't want to play the clock. Too much. And I think we just run this back. I don't think there's any changes. The only card that I kind of like is Fiery Justice. Just because it hits Planeswalkers as well. They didn't see Leyline there either, which is kind of nice. I'm gonna, I'm gonna bring one in. Just want to see if it has an effect on the game. Um, I am gonna go down on either a knight or a Thalia. Might just be knight. Knight's interesting because it can find Caracas, which is pretty important. See how this goes. Probably looking for a ley line start. Uh, this is a pretty easy mull for me. Doesn't really do anything. Getting closer. This is actually pretty interesting. It's not a ley line hand, but it is a, a decent six. I think I'm going to take one more mull just to see if I can find Leyline because I think Leyline will buy me a lot of time. This hand is, is is fine. I think it is greedy to go for Leyline. Actually, this, this hand can also cast Leyline, which is actually a, a, a consideration. Yeah. I mean, turn two, we have either Fiery Justice or Knight of Autumn. Yeah, I'm going to keep it a bottom of the plateau. Yeah, I think this hand has a, has enough going for it. Especially a turn 2 Fiery Justice or Knight of Autumn. Unless they turn 1 Chalice. Which can just happen. Okay. That's fine. Pedal. Okay. What would we be hitting with Autumn? Um, probably a Chalice. That's probably the big one. Oh, is it just a pass from my opponent? That is huge. No. Day's undoing. That's actually more than fine. Okay. Nice-ish. <laughs> okay, that's a pretty perfect draw. Uh, I think it's just Tega hold up force because then we can hold up blue, blue elemental blast as well. Okay. Okay. 
Is this Ballista? A chalice for two. That's fine. Crack. Do they see the force? Birds of Paradise. Okay. Crack. Don't see. All right. I'm going to pitch the Dried Arbor. I don't have a land though, but at least I get to go Bird, hold up Blast if it is the case. Yeah, it's very true. If they force the force, it does get countered anyway. That's very true. Um, I think you're actually just like Thalia. It puts us behind a little bit though. But I think that's better for us than it is for them. It keeps them off Khan, which is pretty huge. And yeah, having the two tombs is pretty interesting. They are bleeding. Pretty much a two-turn clock if they are using their tombs. Okay. Khan tick down. Okay, if we draw a land, we can Green Suns for uh, Noble Hierarch and then attack with Exalted. Which is interesting. Scoos. I still think we care about the Khan enough to attack it. And then play Scoos, so we have a different attacker. Going face is interesting. I'm trying to think about what do I care about with Khan. I think I am happy to attack face. And then play the Scavenging Ooze. Because it's a second threat that Ballista can't deal with. Could also hold up Blast. Good. Green Suns. Yeah. I do like playing Ooze out. Because now it kind of forces them to play the... Uh, the Walking Ballista. Triple Tomb. LED. Okay. Sure. Ballista for one is okay. What are you up to, opponent? Cradle would be huge. It's not Cradle. Yeah, block sack. Still going to attack them. Yeah, hopefully Oof here is is big enough. That's why I want him to kill the Thalia. I think going for Oof is better than holding up Blast. It does play to the board a little bit because we know about the LED. Mox is fine. Emery's not the worst. We have Elemental Blast to get rid of it so it can't block, which is nice. 
and they're currently at four. Nice. Very cool. Interesting games. Interesting games. We did get the Questing Beast line, which is very cool. I was very happy to see that. 3-2 um, isn't too bad. Going down to Doomsday and going down to... We beat Delva. We beat Sneak and Show. We beat Urza. We lost to... Hey monkey, thanks for the follow. What was what was the second loss? Doomsday and hmm. I'm uh I can't even think of it. No, it's got me. <laughs> it's got me. Um, deck was pretty sweet. Let's go back to deck tech. Nice. Let's bring these over here. Yeah, I think the the game would have been a lot more in their favor if they if they did have more things to do. Um, pretty sweet league, uh, a lot of different decks, which is really nice. Um, we saw a bunch of the deck as well. We didn't bring in Court of Grace, which I still want to test and see how it goes because it does seem like a sweet uh, card, especially in Punishing Mav, where you do have more removal to get rid of creatures and hopefully keep the Monarch for longer. Um, we didn't board in Tiles Tracker either. There weren't too many grindy matchups we played against. So that's pretty... Ah, oh, Food Chain. We lost a Food Chain. There we go. Um, but yeah, Food Chain are an interesting one. How was Scrib with the smaller amount of forests in the deck? Yeah, that's a good point. Um, I, I guess in Abzan, I play one extra forest because the two Tagers are just two Bayous. Um... But we didn't see Scrib Ranger enough for there not to be enough. But we did have a turn where we kept a hand with Knight. And we didn't see a uh, Plains or Forest for about seven turns. So that was pretty tough. Um, so maybe there's some sort of movement. I think the Cradle, if anything, in this deck could probably just be an extra fetch land. Um, I, I just wanted to play the Cradle because of Hexdrinker and because of Tireless Tracker. We do have a bit of... Uh, things to dump mana into, but usually with punishing, it's it's pretty tough. Yeah, and we did, yeah, we we got hit a little bit hard by having a cradle hand, but I think the cradle could definitely be like an extra fetch land, probably a uh, a verdant catacombs or a misty. I do like misty because it, it doesn't give away too much if we play misty pass and then die on turn one. Um, so that's probably a, a change that I would make. Um, but I think I would probably just like make that tweak. And then run a league back with this and see how it performs. Then do some other things. Um, but overall, it felt pretty good. Uh, D Stit was running a list that ran uh, Teague and Oof in the sideboard, uh, and then didn't run the extra ley line. Ran Tireless Tracker in the main deck, uh, and I think I ran an extra land. And then D-Stit ran uh, two Jide in the main deck, just as equipment that you can find with, with Sylvan Library or draw naturally, and, and hopefully it, it gets there. But because of Punishing Fire, I felt like we had that sort of matchup covered. So I didn't play the the two main deck Jide and played these two as Green Sun's targets because I wanted more against combo because of just the three Thalia instead of four. I wanted to have like Teague as my four Thalia and then Oof as my Green Sun's target. That's an extra piece against combo or control. Which was kind of cool. But uh, yeah, red's always fun to play with. I don't play Punishing Maverick enough. I think it's uh, pretty underrated. Yeah, Jide's a, an interesting one. Especially with cards like Skyclave around. I feel like it's lost a little bit of its oomph. But, and that's, I guess, oof as well. Uh, but yeah, I think this is a, a deck I can definitely tweak with. Um, Canonist is nice because again, as I said, it does come in against a lot of decks like Elves. Uh, and Hogak, where you don't bring in Deafening Silence. 
but deafening silence just being one mana interaction is really nice against the decks where you really want that sort of effect and with elves already being a pretty rough matchup without cards like plague engineer um you know maybe you don't want to play the canonists and just go straight in for the for the deafening silences but all in all pretty sweet uh rick unfortunately i don't have highlander together but i will play with you sometime i definitely will uh i'm gonna quickly see who else is playing looks like mo panda is playing uh so i'm gonna send you guys over there a huge thank you to coming in and watching uh if you want to find me on youtube you can find me here uh echo your mod lock for the stream here's my twitter link and here's my green sun's link uh, I do have some sweet content coming out uh, this weekend. It is the Lands vs. Maverick matchup analysis with uh, uh, Albert uh, Lindblom, who did the Channel Fireball series uh, with Anzi D and me in commentary, and he and Achilles on Lands vs. Maverick, which is cool. So that should be pretty fun. Uh, yeah, I'll be back on Sunday with a guest host uh, playing some Ant, which is pretty cool. I do have Ant and Paper, so I have a little bit of experience with it, but... Um, I did want to do a co-stream with another Aussie streamer, so that should be pretty fun. So I'll see you there. Uh, that's it. Enjoy your weeks. Enjoy your weekends. Stay safe. Uh, let's get you guys over to Mopanda. And uh, yeah, a huge thank you to the new subs, the new followers. It means a lot. Uh, yeah, can't wait to keep playing some, uh, some more Maverick in the near future. But uh, until then, cheerio.